welcome everyone and happy summer and hopefully everybody's finding ways to keep cool. Watermelon <laughs> and cold water and carrot juice. <laughs> Help yourself. Um, we'll go right into public comments. Does anybody have any public comments to share with us today? Um, if not, then we'll go right ahead with a report from our LAPD senior lead officers. Okay. So as you, um, I know a few of you know me. I'm the senior lead officer for um, the, what I like to call uh, East Chester, right? Everything on the <laughs> east. Um, Very good. Officer Muther here is covering for Officer uh, Sophia Castaneda for everything on the west, uh, West Chester. Um, and then basically what I did today was I, I did a uh, crime analysis run of uh, the area here um, covering... Sepulveda Boulevard from 92nd to Manchester. Um, and then I also incorporated Sepulveda Westway, Sepulveda Eastway, and Truxton Avenue. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> so year to date for 2018 in this area, we had a total of 123 crimes. Uh, last year at this time, we had 74, mm -hmm. and we've had an increase of 66% in this general area here. So I'm a very mm. bad news today. Mm. <laughs> so. And then also, what, um, for the month of July, we did a run from July 1st to July 31st. Um, for the month, we had 22 Part 1 crimes compared to 10 last year. So that's an increase of 120%. Wow. So a lot of these crimes um, that we've been having here in this area, though, um, have been the majority are thefts and uh, burglary from motor vehicles. Um, the thefts, though... Um, sir, please sit down. The, um, the thefts um, in this area, a lot of them have turned into what we call Estes robberies. For those of you that don't know what it is, um, somebody goes into the coals, generally speaking, they commit a theft, but what happens is a security guard then approaches them, law firm approaches them. As soon as they use force or fear to try to get away from that person, it automatically becomes a robbery. So that's what's driving our crime numbers up in this area as far as the uh, robbery goes. At the, at, so you'll see a lot of robberies at the coals, but in reality, it's a theft that turns into that robbery. Um, at the Coles? At Coles. Coles. Oh, at Coles. Coles, 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 Coles store, Coles. yeah. That makes That's sense. where the majority, them and CVS, but majority of them have been the Coles. Got it. Okay. Um, okay. And then so I also conducted a 10-day uh, a run covering um, July 22nd to July 31st. And um, in those 10 days, we've had a total of eight crimes. Um, last year at this period, we had four, so we're up 50%, so we're still seeing that increase. Um, I don't know how much of that has to do with, um, like, transient encampment cleanouts that they've been doing. I know the one that, um, in particular, off by the Century Corridor, um, LASD cops detail, they did a major cleanup over there, um, and they moved a lot of people out. Um, myself and also Javier Ramirez were actually there uh, to monitor the situation, try not to get everybody on the, uh, let them come to the city side. Uh, we were able to do a good job, but then Pacific Division was going crazy and we got activated for radio calls. So uh, how many of those people, I don't know, they were going through, but I want to say that some of that cleanup has something to do with um, the crime, not only going up here like the Sepulveda Corridor, but also on the Century Corridor. A lot of car break-ins and stuff like that. Um, and then I'll just go through uh, five crimes, uh, um, one, two, three, yeah, about five crimes that we had. Um, so let's see, uh, um, between July, and this is kind of what we're dealing with too because of the parking spot. So like be, between July 23rd and July 29th, uh, we had a burglary from motor vehicle at 9101 South Sepulveda. Um, unknown suspect uh, used an unknown hard object to pry open the uh, victim's rear window. Suspect removed a third row seat from the Suburban. Um, no suspect was seen, and then the victim's vehicle was a 2011 uh, gray GMC Suburban. And that's kind of a trend that we've been seeing, this parking spot, the other parking spot, and within <clears throat> Century Corridor. Okay, so that's kind of a trend that we've been seeing. Additionally, um, here off of uh, La Tijera, 8751 La Tijera Boulevard, at the uh, airport van rental business, um, we had another suspect who broke the victim's door. Uh, door lock, gained entry into the vehicle, and removed cash from the vehicle that was left in plain sight there. Visible. So, oh. you know, that's one of those things where... Somebody's wallet? Um, it's actually just supposedly cash. I don't know if it's like a tip jar or something from these guys or, oh. or what's going on, <coughs> but they left it in plain sight, they broke in and they took it. Um, oh. Then we had another one. Um, we had a GTA that occurred at 8814 South Sepulveda. 
Um, victim left his vehicle running on the street while at the ATM, and then uh -huh. two unknown suspects entered the vehicle and drove off to an unknown location. And no suspects were seen on that. Um, and then we had the two Estes robberies that occurred at the Coles last week. Um, one of them, suspect uh, entered the store, grabbed property from the display shelves, placed property in his pockets, fled the scene when he was confronted by loss prevention. A suspect pushed the loss prevention officer and then fled the scene in a white four-door Audi. Um, the good thing about this is there's good video and there's a good license plate um, on the suspect's car. So I'm assuming that uh, um, arrests will be soon made, especially with the follow-up that we have. And uh, she was described as a, a female black, 5'9", 155 pounds, 30 years of age. And then we had an, the other SU's robbery. Uh, suspect entered the store um, with an empty covered baby carrier. Um, they cut the sensors off some merchandise, merchandise, placed some merchandise into the carriers, mm -hmm. and walked out without pain. And then uh, the two suspects, when approached by loss prevention, overwhelmed the uh, loss prevention officer. Um, and then they got into a silver Nissan as well. They have good video there, so we got a good license plate information. And uh, they were described as a, the suspect one was described as a male, black, uh, black, brown, black hair, brown eyes, 5'9", 155 pounds, 30 years of age, and he was with... Uh, a female black with black hair, brown eyes, 5'4", 150 pounds, also 30 years of age. Um, but like I said, we have good follow-up on that. And, and to, then, pick, to piggyback on, on that one, that was actually uh, so a family of, I think, about five people who were involved in that last one that he discussed. It was the mom, the dad, maybe two teenagers, and then two younger kids, probably under 10. So everyone yeah. except the two real younger kids were pretty much involved in the whole um, situation and then I did go and talk to loss prevention there um, and just reminded them hey maybe just next time don't confront them if you're outnumbered for your safety and it was one of the senior guys there and he said that night he couldn't sleep because he knows that he and his partner probably should have just you know let them go with the merchandise because they obviously jeopardized you know it could have escalated and, you know, yeah. so he, he was very well aware of, you know, what they did wrong, but he said it was a learning experience and luckily none of them were hurt. Um, and they have really good video. Um, they're talking to detectives. They have video on all, all the entire family member, yeah. uh, all the family members, the car did come back stolen. It was, it didn't have plates on it, but they are smart enough that they were able to take a picture of the VIN number. So there's really good follow-up, right. yeah. So the rest is imminent, probably on both of those cases. Yeah. Um, and then uh, just two more. So on uh, July 31st at 12 midnight, we had a robbery that occurred at the bus stop, 6136 West Manchester Avenue. Um, suspect approached the victim, struck him in the face with a closed fist. Oh. They removed the property from the victim and fled on foot to unknown location. And uh, one of the suspects did simulate a handgun. Um, and then suspects were described as a two male blacks, six feet, 180 pounds, approximately 20 years of age. And then on the last one, we had a theft occur at the CVS pharmacy. And uh, this one was just suspect one and two entered the store with a shopping cart and uh, carry bags. Suspect one and two, they placed that into the bags and exited the business without pain. They were never confronted. So, um, but they were described as, uh, suspect one was described as a male black, 200 pounds, 50 years of age. And he was with a female Hispanic with brown hair, 5'5", 130 pounds, 40 years of age. So with all that being said, I know I brought you guys uh, bad news. However, um, mm -hmm. because the dots are on the map and, you know, our command staff is seeing this, um, one of the main crime, the focus areas for the crime missions um, within Pacific Division is here along the Sepulveda Corridor, um, not only on the uh, east side, but also on the west side. So when the officers have their free time, they will be coming and when they're not handling radio calls they're, they're coming into this area to you know to, to handle some of the uh to just give the extra patrol and more you know be more visible and whatnot as long as with officer muth and her partner they've been coming into the coles parking lot area doing extra patrols um we've been trying to shoot everybody out too that we know doesn't have any business here um but with the amount of people out there are it's just uh it's just like we're basically what we're doing is we're moving people around you know, so it's just one of those things. I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to add, Jennifer. Good. No, that's yeah. pretty much it. That's um, pretty much yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, I come here as often as I can, almost daily, um, whether it's in the parking lots or off Sepulveda Westway or on 88th and Liberator. 
but I'm always in the area spending a lot of time just trying to make sure everyone's safe and cleaning up the RVs in the area, just trying to improve the quality of life. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And then to that too, um, we've been working closely too with Lawa PD. Um, I know that there were some complaints about transient encampments on the east side over here by Nielsen Park and all that area that they were kind of coming over. We actually found a really, really large encampment over there um, behind the bushes, um, two people there, but we were able to get them all out. And uh, Lawa PD is now cutting back all the shrubbery around that area so they can't hide there. So. We're trying, but it's just a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. it a, is it a, what's the reason that things have been so yeah. bad? I, well, summer. I think, I think, well, summer obviously our, our uh, crime yeah. numbers <laughs> do drive up in the summertime. Um, so we know that's part of it. Um, uh -huh. But it, when I look at the, um, the numbers in, in the whole for, let's say, um, my basic car area and then her basic car area, we're actually down. Excuse me. We're actually down in crime. So like right now for um, Officer Castaneda's area, um, for total part one crime, which is homicide, rape, robbery, ags, aggravated assault, um, burglary, grand theft auto, burglary for motor vehicle, and deaths, we're actually down as a whole 10.2%. Uh, 10.2%, um, let's say, uh, basic car wide. Mm -hmm. And then for the east side, for my side, we're actually down 7.9%. Mm. However, though, we're seeing on the Sepulveda corridor just a uh, more increase of that crime happening here. You know, so I I, I really don't know. I wish I I knew, but I don't know. I mean, it's just uh, one of those things, and we're hoping to to call that you know that number. So hopefully it'll work. Well, so I, like I said, I just bear bad news today. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> unfortunate but I like to give you guys a real picture of what's going on mm -hmm. yeah you guys know yeah must have something to do with the proximity to LAX and just people just mulling around congregating trying to sleep over there and come mm -hmm. over here and yeah I don't know. I, interesting. I, I had some to I I've been seeing recently a lot of people using it and it's gonna sound strange but those birds mm -hmm. going up and down <laughs> the oh, yeah. aisles in the parking lots mm -hmm. a lot you know and I don't know if they're looking in cars, whatever it is, but it, the, the security officers in the area have also complained to me about seeing people on these things. And, right. and normally they're going to use bikes, but not you never know. I mean, it's a good way to hide. Because so, like, yeah. when you think of somebody using the bird, you think of somebody that's trying to get to and from work, to and is from. Is that a scooter? Yeah, yeah. Mm, scooters, the electric, scoot electric scooters. Electric oh, um, scooters. So maybe it's a good yeah, way to blend in and just, oh, I'm just trying to do my bird. Um, but when I see them going up and down the parking lot, you know, yeah. there's no reason for them to be in the parking lot. Right, right. Because they're going to transition from one place to another. Yeah. So. I know with the bird scooters, um, there's a lot of talk of, um, there's been some talk um, from the council office about um, trying to mimic what Santa Monica, um, City of Santa Monica is doing. Um, I know that the city of Culver City just said, hey, we welcome the bird scooters. As long as you're 18, have a jar of and wear a helmet, they want them in the city. Um, I know that the Venice community does not want them because yeah. of the amount of uh, injuries that, like on the bike paths and stuff like that people have been having. Um, so it's just one of those things, um, but I, that's something that has to go through council. What, what's Santa Monica doing? Santa Monica is basically doing a lot of enforcement um, as far as um, they're actually impounding the bird scooters. So if you're like young kid on a bird scooter, uh -huh. um, they were actually doing like a task force where they're impounding the scooters. If they're not wearing a helmet, they're citing them. If they're mm -hmm. supposedly, I guess, under 18, they're citing them. So we don't have any specific mm -hmm. regulations right now in place for the city of LA, mm -hmm. but I heard they wanted to mimic what was going on in the city of Santa Monica, but I think they were waiting to see what they were gonna do so that then they can kind of implement the stuff. So, so and we're <laughs> in such close proximity that once they go to the Santa Monica Pier into Venice, they kind of want to try to keep it, I think, a little uniform. Um, but obviously that's beyond our, um, our realm of, find, of knowing until they tell us, hey, this is what you guys are gonna do. So they'll make the rules and then we'll just try to enforce How them. How did these get just thrown on the street here and with no rules in the I have no idea. Because I, I, have, I have a blind, totally 100% blind um, therapist and he wiped out on one the other day 
and I've been warning him, like, make sure you, you yeah. really go with circumference on oh, your stick. Yeah, to, because, uh, uh, but he wiped out one, rolled over. I mean, he just, he got so angry, he just threw it. I don't know where he threw it, but he uh, threw it. The word, the word we like, have is They're just that, in the path. They're yeah. in the pathway. Yeah. The word that we have is they never notified anybody that they were going to have this business and just drop off these scooters. They never notified anybody. They just uh -huh. kind of did it. Um, it what I heard sure. at the last meeting I was at was that either city of LA or I think it was the city of LA was going to try to hire people to drive around and when they see these scooters mm -hmm. on the ground or something mm -hmm. drive around pick them up move them so that the pathways are clear I don't know what came about if that, if that yeah, happened or not to get racks. but it's gonna yeah. they need to be have designated yeah, racks. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. well that's been an issue too and they pay for with we already have a problem with like uh shopping carts and Port. the airport carts and stuff mm -hmm. and now we're seeing birds, birds scooters just being dropped off you know just in people's way you know right. in, the, in, in the freeways for the, for the sidewalk and they can drop them off wherever they want and yeah. just leave because they're because they're gps oh yeah yeah, yeah. So, i mean they're uh, they're all over the city i mean if you guys drive yeah. around you see them they're all over the city yeah. and now there's two companies there's the bird and line so there's a new company that just oh, started right. doing it called Lime. Yeah, yeah. The, green the green ones. Yeah. Right. yeah. They light so now up. it's like double the amount. <laughs> they, they light up on the bottom at yeah. night. At night. Oh, yeah. So cool. they're supposed to keep more cars off the street. <laughs> but yeah, but the complaint. Have in other ways. Yeah. But the complaint has been that the people ride them on the sidewalk. They yeah. Um, they're not, you know, they're not um, watching out for pedestrians that are on Where the sidewalk. Where are they supposed to be? On the, on the bike lane? On the street with the cars? It's just completely dockless, yeah. so yeah. they can ride anywhere, yeah, totally. and the only regulations are the helmets, helmets right. that they're just now starting yeah. to Sorry enforce. To. Yes. Um, but it's driven by your app, so you pull them up on your phone, and wherever it, it's at GPS, and you just hop on, and wherever you drop it off, is where you drop it off, and then another and person can just can grab it. it. But they are trying to incentivize people picking them up. If you pick them up and recharge them, they get yeah, paid there's, some there's guys money. That will just so you'll see people with trucks mm -hmm. that are they just pick up picking the bird scooters, up. And if they can scooters. charge them, they'll take them home. They'll they'll uh, recharge the batteries at their house, and then they just put them back out. And I think they get paid like five dollars per scooter that they charge. So. That's what they're it's like a little cottage industry yeah, of people that do that, right? Yeah, and then right. they drop them off. The like, no, they're the just height. it's kind of almost like an Uber Lyft type deal yeah. where no, it could be they're kind of hired like that. It could just be anybody. Oh, yeah, I charged five scooters at five dollars. I mean, 25 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Wow, so. <laughs> yeah. well, thanks for yeah. so, <laughs> sorry, sorry, but um, yeah, hopefully, we'll be able to um, you know, monitor um, this area a little bit more. And um, go from there. Nice. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you guys. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Lewis. Okay. Thank you. Lewis. Good. Thank you. So, okay. If I see like the thunder stick. Yeah. Thank you. She's replacing somebody. Pardon me. She's she's doing Sophia right now. She's in the west side. Who's in the kitchen? So in our house. Yeah. 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 You can just leave. Alright, it's fine. I do. Finish drinking. I'll finish. She's trying to give up the rest of her juice. Fair enough. Her name is. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks. Jennifer Music. So she's yeah, the she's other thing I wanted to do for the just for the board's information is uh, make note in this meeting that Matt Techley, who was formerly with Otis College and we've worked with uh, in the past, has recently been appointed as the CD11 field representative, taking the place of Anna Cosma. And so uh, um, he was going to try to be here today, but then there was something about a trip to somewhere that Kenya got in the way. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> you can't understand it. <laughs> we will be seeing from Matt. He's, I think, he's going to be uh, very helpful. He's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and wonderfully professional and uh, community-oriented. And so uh, we look forward to working with him. Well, he already knows a bunch of us. <laughs> yeah, he knows a bunch. So of he's us. very well connected. Yeah. Uh, financial report, Don? Um, in the board's packets is a copy of the financial report um, uh, as prepared by the bookkeeper. Um, I think the document stands uh, for itself and, and uh, I, I would urge uh, board adoption. Also include is, included is a copy of the farmer's market financial report. Uh, later in the agenda, we're going to have a report from uh, Cynthia, the farmer's market manager 
about um, some of the, the um, specifics of her operation as it is ongoing. Um, also, I, I distributed to the board the, uh, the year-to-date financials, which, so you can see where we are. Uh, everything uh, is clocking pretty, pretty uh, much in tune with where we were last year. It's kind of a mirror image of the, of the year past. So I would urge uh, board approval. I move to second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. And in the minutes, you should do two, uh, Madam President. Okay. Do I have a motion for the minutes? A motion to approve the minutes. So. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, next, we're going to hear from Lori Hughes. Right. Uh, the, uh, we invited Lori Hughes, the what? executive director of the Gateway to Los Angeles bid, to our meeting today to talk about a proposal that we've kind of been talking about back and forth about what to do with that area between the two bids that the airport is going to fill with parking and other kinds of things. And so we've all been involved a little bit on the periphery, and Lori's going to. Uh, bring us in tune with some of her thinking and and maybe some ways we can collaborate so with yeah. that. Um, well thank you guys and hello everyone I don't know. <laughs> um, hello Heather haven't seen you in a long time okay. um, back in March uh, ULI came out and did a technical assistance panel and I don't know if you're familiar with I know you are you know, some of you are but um, they come out for a day and a half and they uh, meet all the constituents, the uh, airport, uh, metro, our stakeholders, uh, um, and various interest groups, and talk about you know what could be done in the area. And in particular, this was kind of a follow-up to one that we'd done in 2011. Uh, and so now we're saying, okay, uh, in 2011 they they suggested putting a consolidated car rental facility in and a uh, automated people mover and uh, you know, to try and help get a lot of the traffic out of the CTA, especially the car rental agencies, uh, and and to free up some of the land because they decided that a lot of the land in the area is taken over by or it is used by car rental facilities, um, which is just surface parking, and they thought you know the better use for the community um, is to you know, attract uh, commercial and retail development. So we have we have um, 8,000 hotel rooms in that area, which is the largest concentration of hotel rooms, believe it or not, west of the Mississippi, except for Las Vegas. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's wow. Yeah, I, I know. And, and so, the but we don't... concentration well, of hotel rooms west of the Mississippi, except for Vegas. Except for Vegas. <laughs> so, and, and, but we, what we don't have is, is anything to do. Mm. We've always had that problem. Mm. I know, rest, you know, very few restaurants, they're all in hotels. Um, uh, not to say that's bad, but, um, you know, uh, entertainment, things mm. like that, retail. So that's kind of what our mission has been to attract um, investment that's going to bring in commercial and things things to do in the area. Mm -hmm. So we had them come back out. We said, okay, now the airport's done designed their uh, landside access modernization projects. Okay, with that in mind, what do you suggest? And so um, they put together this report. And basically, um, it has some key elements to it. They, they think that there should be more of a north-south flow rather than an east-west flow as, you know, Century Boulevard, that we should make it north-south, north, south, more connectivity to this side. Um, and one of the things that, that Lawa didn't like was this one ITF uh, uh, parking structure that they've designed that's going to go between 96th and, and uh, Arbor Vida, Westchester Park Parkway. Um, they just suggested that it, it be tweaked a little bit, bring some uh, uh, kind of a corridor in between the two um, parking structures that would 
you know, rather than being a block that kind of, um, what did you say the other dead day? Dead ends. Yeah, it's just dead ends, you know. Um, keep that connectivity and that pedestrian flow mm -hmm. going. Um, and so, Blava, of course, has gone, it is gone far down the line in their bid process and all this, they don't want to make any changes. Okay, well, even so, we really want, hope that Lawa will embrace this idea in the city, you know, that this area, this whole area can be a much bigger destination, should be. Um, and these are some of the elements to it. So I'm just, um, you know, I guess, looking for collaboration and support as we move through these different groups you know that we're all on the same page you know that mm -hmm. we, we want to have that connectivity we want um you know to attract this other additional yep. commercial and retail and and you know one of the things we've gone through over the years you know saying that with howard you know is yep. there clearly is a difference between what our gateway's mission, you know, what our the stakeholders are, we're hospitality driven, you know, we're mm -hmm. tourism driven, where this is more commercial, residential driven, but we still think there's a, a synergy there. In our well, people love to walk these days. Yeah. So, or ride scooters. So it makes complete sense to find you know, make a beautiful pathway with over to, to Westchester, and Westchester needs more mm. things to do at night. Absolutely. So I think, yeah. I think Lori's describing a situation that we've often felt too, and that is that the, the more people that you can have on your list of supporters for a program, the more likely is that the airport might listen. And so I'd like to join her in recommending that the board approve um, a recommendation that we work together with Gateway to LA bid to try to activate the, the area between us uh, in long-term master plans and other ways that may become more concrete as the LAMP program goes to implementation. And so that, that would be my recommendation and, and uh, I'm happy to join in Laurie in that, that regard. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You want me to leave the room? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'd like one to of your... Oh, of course. Anybody want a brochure? I brought I brought yeah, brochures. I just... I've sent it to you three times. Now, <laughs> <laughs> anybody else? Do we have one at the office no? already? Okay. Yes, we have one. <laughs> okay. okay. So we, uh, we need a motion. I so move. I second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's exciting. Yeah, Ken and I, exciting. Ken and I went to the uh, little jazz club. Oh no. my gosh, Is it's that so great. Yes, anyone that likes jazz Words. music, this is, um, you know, you have to follow exactly the directions that are, that are <laughs> on the social media part of that. It has a funky name, Sam, Sam One. Sam First Bar. Sam First. See, and that's I thought actually it was a name. One. That's his name, his grandfather's name, the mm -hmm. Sam First. Oh. But it's just the cutest little, and it's just, it's jazz. There's not a TV in the place, okay? Uh -huh. yeah. Sports. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's cocktails and, and jazz. And then really. little munchies, they have hummus and a couple of other little dinky yeah. tapas trays. Really great. Because mm -hmm. we didn't have dinner because we weren't <laughs> sure, and so we, we had those hors d'oeuvres. And the music was fabulous hmm. the night that we went. I mean, the decor is really cool, 60s style, and yeah. uh, they have this little dinky kitchen, and they have really terrific cocktails, and the music was great. I would highly recommend it. And um, we had, you know, we had to find street parking, yeah. which worked out well. But it was crowded, and they do two sessions, mm -hmm. one at 8 and one at 10 or something like that. 8 for me, because I can't stay up. Right, I <laughs> went to the 8 o'clock one. Yeah, I can't stay up either. What, what That's for the young kids. Yeah. It's really <laughs> past my bedtime. Yeah. So anyway, more of that. That's what I'm thinking. We'll be yeah. really That's that really fun. what we're trying to do. Yeah. 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 Fun oh, stuff okay. to do, you know, yeah. entertainment, old-time yeah. 1950s style. And, mm -hmm. I mean, it, yeah. 
hopefully. Lori, one of the things, things I've like been invited to participate in the uh, Flight Path Learning Center mm -hmm. and the airport's wanting them to move. Well, and that's, and yeah. I, I thought of the idea of having them move into that area. <laughs> Building a beautiful museum in that area. I mean, would that not? We've that would be such. It really would be done. perfect. Done. Yes. The, That's the, exactly what we need. Yes. They yes. need a super building that's yeah. really eye attractive, that be close to the air, the freeway, mm -hmm. so that yep. you get it to right, right there. They're in the corner of the world, and nobody knows they're yeah. there. Right. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then we could tie them into our plaques. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Our our Sepulveda plaques. Right. I, I mean, it would give people something to do. You know. I mean. Yeah, a museum. But I think yeah. they have their hearts very in interesting. The, the property on the west. Oh, there. on the north oh, side. Yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's very interesting. Oh yeah. no, I know. I've been there. Yeah. yeah. Well, been. you know, I don't think anything's been set in cement yet. So, um, where what I is there a, a, a building over there that? Well, right now we just got we've just got land. You know, it's yeah. just a land, land use process at this point. Just trying to. And we're going to have to go through this process of, of their recommendation is that we um, <clears throat> have a draft, have a master plan, uh, which we don't have, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, put in place. Uh, and then at that point, I think, yeah, well, you guys know the process you're going through it more than I do, but. Uh, um, Has the airport designed that area next to the freeway? I, I tried to find something on the internet. And no, find it. no. They're only concentrating on their um, transportation, uh, what the, these guys say, their engineering buildings. They're, they're kind of, and, and I can understand it, they don't want to talk about anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, they're focused on their... Getting you know, people to the airport. Yeah, and getting people <laughs> out of the CTA. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's logical, you yeah, know, sure. but but there is a bigger, bigger 50,000... Yeah. Uh, yeah, master plan. It. And right. Master yeah, plan. Exactly. Right. So that's, you know, what we need, you know, what we need to do. And if you guys can be part of that, we would love to have that. And we're going to work, I think, with Lisa AAA. Mm. Good. See if we can get that done. <clears throat> Super. Thank you. Okay. So where do we go from here? Just meet with you guys and brainstorm. Well, we need to have lunch. Yeah. Um, we, we, so we'll talk First about start out with lunch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Aren't they just, can, aren't they working on an update right now on the whole update on the on the master plan in our area here right now? They are. They just started. Um, yeah. Krista Klein announced that, that. So we'll participate in that. Yeah. Is that inclusive in that area? It I think, it yes, it is. Doesn't it go all the yes, way down is. to the airport? Is that the community plan? Yeah. yeah. The community it's plan just my there. concern about that. I think that's going to be a really long process. Okay, some of these things that we're su are they're suggesting in here, you know, we really need to get, get, on, air, it. Yeah, get on it before the airport yeah, right, <laughs> you know, yeah. puts their shovel in the ground. They'll, they'll be able yeah. to yeah. Do it <laughs> right. Then we'll be stuck. And let's talk about that building on, on the, the old First Nation White building. So, you know, oh, the just, old, the di oh, yeah, that yeah. building. What's happening with that building? Does anybody know? He's got a difficult mm -hmm. owner who, um, yeah, just yeah, he's got asbestos. I can't do anything with it. Really? Mm -hmm. It just needs so, to come down. Yeah. We we should right. probably move on to the next. Okay. One. Thank you, Lori. Yes. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And next we'll hear from Cynthia. All right. All right. Okay. <clears throat> this one. This one. Here. <coughs> so, um, <coughs> Just look at the overall number. We've been steadily growing um, since we've opened. You can see the grid on top or at 2016 when we started, uh, 2017, uh, finished the year around 27,000. 
and based on what we're projecting now, about 36,000 we should end of the year. So up from the previous years. Um, I'm looking at number two uh, for our goals for the year. So basically our last, uh, last year our weekly average was $523. Um, and our goal is to move it up to 600. If we move the weekly average up to 600, that means that we'll bring in a total of 30,000 by the end of the year for revenue for the market. Um, and in terms, if you add that with our sponsorships, uh, last year we brought in $2,000 worth of sponsors. This year we have at least 6,000, potentially more. Um, we're working on reaching out to additional sponsors, so that should go up as well. Uh, the vendor development side's going well. Uh, you know, we started off on 87th Street, and now we're starting to kind of curb around and get into Sepulveda East Way uh, to kind of create an L shape, but also greater visibility with the, the parking lots, all the parking lots about Sepulveda East Way. It's also with the bookstore. There's going to be a lot of energy for that opening up, what, in April? So we're kind of leading into that along with uh, the big apartment building structure so that when people, folks are there, the residents can look down and they'll see in Sepulveda the East Way a bunch of canopies. So that's kind of uh, where the momentum of the development of the market's heading towards. Um, our marketing, we're still pushing on all fronts, uh, social media, Facebook, we're up, I think at 2,300. Followers, Instagram, we're around 1,100. Uh, we've got around 2,000 with our e-newsletter. Pretty decent click-through rate at uh, right around 23%. Um, we do some paid ads. We do a lot with the boosting of on social media. We just started doing a little Google ads as well, which is kind of nice. Um, we continue to do the print ads with Hometown News um, with a coupon incentive that people love. Uh, they always clipping those out and coming to the market with them, which is nice to see. Mm -hmm. uh, we pulled back on the mailers. We did that um, last year, pretty pricey. Uh, and instead, um, we've been doing a lot of like postcards and posters and things like that. And uh, Steve has been really helpful in, in passing those things out. Um, and I think, you know, in as much as you need to do social media and do the print ads and these sort of things are big pushes word of mouth. People who come to the market enjoy it and tell others along with just being out in the community, um, you know, going to different special events, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, and the community building aspect is huge too. Like it as much as the farmer's market is about health and wellness and access to, um, you know, all the fruits and veggies and, and these sort of things. It's really about being a community hub, bringing in as many community organizations as possible and having it as a place for families and residents to come out and just enjoy kind of the Westchester feel, which is very much like a small town in a bigger city. And so we've really been developing that. Uh, Don and Mickey um, have been awesome with helping with the, supporting all the different kids' activities and live music. And now we have a petting zoo every week, which has been very popular. Um, also, we have the programming side with EBT, uh, which is like a food stamps. Uh, we also have a market match program where we can double those benefits up to $10. Uh, we have loyalty programs that are really popular with the local residents. It's a card, they get a stamp. If they spend at least $10 at the market, we stamp it. And after they get 10 stamps, they get $10, $10 worth of market tokens. And they love it. And they, it makes for great photos too. Like they're holding their card and they have the veggies and we say get stamped and goes out on social media. So uh, that's all been really, really yeah, good it's been nice. Um, on this second page here um, regarding other updates, um, you know, we're always getting inspected and so far so good. We've uh, <laughs> Got through ag, um, agriculture department's been out a handful of times, and you have two different departments that come out. It's been fine. The health inspectors have been gone fine as well. All our permitting's current. Um, you know, we had to redo our street permit, which was a bit of a process. Um, but yeah, we got it, and we also are extended on our permit now. So we have all of 87th Street, and we now have, because we're kind of, we we're kind of just kind of taking the area, so to speak. We were kind of inching out, and then talked to Don and Mickey I was like we, we should just like apply for it and, you know and, and they're like yeah do it so we did um, and we've got that um, Sepulveda Eastway extended out to 
um, not all the way quite, not all the way to Coffee Company, but just a bit before it, you know, because we still want people to have access, obviously, to the parking lots. Sure. So we have that, which is great. Um, the big thing is our, spo our special event calendar that's coming up. So we just, um, we just did the anniversary celebrations. That was really uh, well received. Um, we had a nice lead in. Uh, Hometown News did a beautiful article. On the, on the markets, which was really nice. So Don was quoted in there. I got some quotes in there as well. They're all great. Uh, they kind of echoed uh, an earlier article, Karen, where you spoke about what the market's about. Um, so anyway, the article was really nice. Uh, we were in the 4th of July parade. Uh, it was a nice showing. We had the kids train. We partnered with Emerson Community Gardens. We had lots of little sunflowers and kids that came out. We had a, also kind of like a stroller brigade, like a lot of moms and kids and strollers before them, uh, alongside the uh, train, so that was really nice. And then announced the anniversary celebration as well. Um, and then we had the anniversary celebration. Um, Nick Melvoin, a uh, school board member, Nick melvoin has been a huge advocate, and he came down for the Sunday location, spoke spoke on you know behalf of the community uh, and it was just you know really nice and was there for a good couple hours we had a handful of community groups everybody from like wish charter to pacific boosters um, that were there uh, so that was really nice uh, we had the anniversary cake uh, don and mickey mickey was there earlier don was there we all had the cake which was nice and so moving forward uh, for august and september in talking with school board member Nick Melvoin, I was like, what do we, what do we do with back to school day? And he's like, yeah, that would be great. And I asked him, I said, could, could your office work with me to outreach to all the schools so we could get a, a greater presence? And he said, absolutely. So, so that's the next thing we want to, we want to do that sometime. We were talking, he's going on vacation, I think late August, early September. So he was recommending like, mid-September when people are back in school. And so in between that, um, I remember Mickey connected me with the fire department. We had the fire truck. So we'll do like little nice touches, like have the fire truck come out, um, obviously have as many schools as we can, great bands, you know, all the kids activities, the petting zoo, um, you know, any youth groups, YMCA, things like that. Um, I think that should be a fun day. Maybe some pet adoptions as well, you know, families and, People always love to little, little puppies and things like that. So we're gonna plan for that in September. Uh, yeah, and in between that, in August, September, we have a lot of events around town that the market will have a booth there to promote the market. Um, the Wham Fest. Mm -hmm. So we'll be at the Wham Fest, which will be fun. It's always fun. Yeah, and then we have Live and Running, right? In September, I've already connected with Jacqueline Buddha. Or Chuckling. He knows I'm there. Yeah. So we'll be there handing out oranges to the runners. Uh, Jet to Jetty, I'm assuming, is going to happen again. That is September, huh? Yeah. Okay. The end of September. So those, uh, so we'll be at all those different events. Uh, October, I think this might be the year that we could do a beer garden, which would be fun. Um, Christian with Melody's uh, Girl and Bar definitely would love to do a beer garden. Uh, but I also think Three Weavers in Inglewood, which is a very popular brewery, uh, mm -hmm. would be a great tie-in. Should be invited. Yeah. LMU is doing one this weekend. Yeah. Oh, a beer garden? Just that? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Who drops beer? You know, that's oh, just the, kind of like that. Okay. It's like their wine thing, but a beer thing. <laughs> That's cute. Sounds like a good time. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what local breweries are doing. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, so right. hopefully we can get that done. It obviously requires all those different permits and things, but we should be able to get done. Um, November, uh, like a Harvest Fest, Thanksgiving, cooking demo. December, a, a winter fest, you know, Santa, all sorts of tie-ins, you know, kids coming out, doing gift wrapping and things like that. Um, and then just the last bit, just to really emphasize how much the market really is a community hub, um, just kind of some of the people that we've been collaborating with um, from the local reps, as we mentioned, Vaughn doing the tree giveaways, being at the market, Nick Melvoin, even Autumn Burke reached out to us, which was really nice to see. Um, 
and then you know all the different the police department with their Christmas wagon, the Santa, the fire truck, um, all sorts of different tie-ins there. The schools we've been having local schools coming out, uh, all the youth groups. Um, Otis actually had like a Maker's Day where they brought some students doing different like zines and things, so that was really nice. And I'm sure they'll do it again this year. LMU has been very supportive with their athletic groups and they brought the cheerleaders out on Sundays at the Sunday's market as well, which was kind of fun. And um, so I'm sure they'll be doing that. And then lots of eco and wellness groups, Master Gardeners and Emerson and all sorts of good stuff. The Chamber has been really supportive as well um, with Christina and of course Hometown News with Stephanie and the Elks and Rotary. So that's the full report. Thank you. Thank you. Do you, do we know when the apartments are opening? I, I keep I hearing July, but yeah, and then August it's going to take a, I was talking with Gus, um, with the coffee company and then he felt like it wouldn't be occupied till really January. That's what's Gus. Yeah. yeah. And they, they, really? were saying, they were saying, so they don't be August open, but it will take a while to be occupied. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, wow. That takes, that's a long time. Yeah. I mean, for that whole Fully process, occupied. I figure it would be yeah, quicker than that. But oh, it maybe Gus. I mean, that's what, what do I know? Are that's what I heard from Gus. I don't know if that's the case. They're, 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 they're apartment. Oh, yeah, yeah, me too. They were supposed to open in May, and then it was July, and then. So they're, op they're open now, but they just need to be occupied. Right. Okay. So, all right. People they're, ask all the time. They're, 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 not, leasing. they're, they're not leasing yet. They're, oh, they're not leasing yet. No, not oh, okay. Aware. I don't. Okay. I don't think we're taking, I don't, I'm not aware that they're well, taking these applications. And I, I realistically, from the time that they, realistically, realistically, from the time that they start leasing, you're probably looking at six months based on the unit count before they fully lease out. Oh, okay. So yeah. Whenever that starts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that'll be a big boon for Westchester. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything. All the eateries, all the grocery stores, yeah. all the fun things to do with farmer's markets and whatever. It'll be big. Because mm -hmm. uh, they'll all be walking, hopefully, not taking up parking spaces. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, thanks for the wonderful you. report. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. And, yeah. And Don and Mickey. Wonderful. It's been great working with them. We love our veggies. <laughs> <laughs> we love our well, We have regular meetings and stuff, and it makes yeah. it a lot easier, you know, to be able to have that kind of collaboration and feedback. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And Don, uh, the bid priority projects? Yeah, uh, item C, um, I'll, I'll be bringing back a, a priority um, a matrix uh, presentation of the priorities we talked about at the last meeting, at the next meeting. And I just carried this item forward on the agenda so we didn't lose it. Uh, that, that said, one of the things we did talk about in the past uh, is helping to facilitate Athens uh, problem solving on the waste collection, the trash collection in, in Westchester. And Amanda Mejia is here today, as well as her uh, environmental coordinator, Brian, 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 mm -hmm. Brian right. Uh, Amanda, I don't know if you want to say anything or have any comments? Sure, so good morning, everyone. Amanda Mejia, Government Affairs Manager for Athens Services. Good to see you all. I know it's been a while, so I was uh, following uh, Donald saying, when is your next meeting? Because I definitely want to be there. Um, so we did have an updated newsletter. Now we're going to get another updated newsletter because this is from the spring, but feel free to take one and pass it down. Um, it's just information that we're trying to provide to folks with some of the new things that have come out. So one from the last time I spoke to you is the boxes. So many folks who have cardboard boxes and they don't fit um, in their bin even after breaking them down, we are allowing them to put them on the side of the bin broken down, stacked up, and we will take them. Um, that is included with your service. So prior to that, it was anything outside of your bin is not picked up. But if those boxes are, like I said, stacked up on the side, that is something that we will be picking up. And if they don't, you all may have my information. I'll leave my cards just to make sure to give me a call, but they should be picking those up. Um, another thing that uh, we launched was our online uh, mobile phone app system. So folks can see their bills and they can also, I believe, report any issues on there. The issue system is still through the city, but we do not turn down anybody who does call Athens directly. But through the contract, it is to call this Recycle hotline phone number and then um, place your concern there or 
um, if you need an extra bin, if you need uh, a new bin, et cetera, that would be through their system. But again, this is an easier way for folks to be able to view their bill and be able to do um, connect with Athens. So I'm not sure if any of you are aware of the new app, but that's been out for maybe a month, I think, like about a month. Um, and again, just continuing to do outreach. I think outreach is going to be forever, really. I'm just getting folks to, um, be on track with their service. I know as people begin to recycle more, then we're starting to adjust their, their trash levels because we don't want folks to uh, automatically just get a bigger recycling bin and then you know their trash and not know what to do with it. So we're slowly changing, adjusting folks, um, the businesses and the properties as they become accustomed to what the transition has been. Um, we are getting some great results where people are recycling more. I will say and I will acknowledge you all because you're nearly, she barely took it out though, a, a zero waste office here and we do uh, you know, applaud folks and we, we want to recognize them um, and, and you all for, for doing that because it really is important for our environment for um, as we move forward with the landfill space that is running out but we do really appreciate and acknowledge um, that you all are zero waste um, as we continue to move forward we're finding other opportunities to do outreach and education so we do have the door-to-door -door that we're doing with our recycling coordinators who are still outreaching to the customers but we also want to be included or if we can go to any events we're going to be doing national night out in the hollywood area this tuesday um, and participating in that um, and just continuing to do outreach and community um, engagement that's really one of our priorities um, to, to get connected with folks. Uh, in the Melrose bid, we spoke about doing some meetings in Westchester, we wanna do the same. It turned out great where we did one-on-one, -on -one. so if there are concerns, folks can share those with me, and then I can get on uh, with making sure that we find long-term solutions uh, for any issues that are happening with businesses or residential properties. So that is something that we definitely want to plan for the Westchester bid as well. Mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, I'm pretty free with my schedule. If, if another bid is not taking over my schedule, I'm pretty open to having, you know, consecutive, I think we did like three meetings in a week. Mm -hmm. um, and we can spread them out in the month. And I'm more than happy to attend those with uh, Brian Suarez, who's more of the expert in this area, as to um, the outreach component for the actual individual customers. But I do a lot of the outreach in the community. So we'll be trying to schedule some meetings and doing a big community um, uh, invitation to meetings and then people come in and we use it as an opportunity to introduce them to Amanda and she can solve their problems if there's a trash problem specific that needs to be solved she's been very effective and innovative in, in some of the approaches and it, it's been yeah. good and with that being said I, I, I appreciate being here to the whole meeting because it's nice to hear also from the police officers since we as Athens have I found innovative ways to work with the police department as well um, because of some of the encampment issues that we what that we're seeing uh, specifically in alleyways so Athens yeah is a company that just you know solely picks up your trash and recycling etc but we're trying to really be a partner to make sure that the issues that the communities are facing when it comes to encampments or uh, not being able to pick up the trash due to block blocked alleyways or anything like that, that we work closely with LAPD and with the council offices. If there's opportunities to privatize alleyways or, you know, just to be educated on who's who and who, who's the department to call whenever there, there are issues, that's really important to us. So one, not because we don't want folks just calling us, but we want folks to really understand what the process looks like with the city and also with Athens and wherever we can provide support more than happy to do so, but we want to continue those relationships in all of our areas. Well, speaking for drawing a property, Brian, it's been amazing. He's walked all our properties with us, he's followed up with us, he's done what he said. He's going to do You have a lot to be proud of, and Brian, okay. we're very grateful it's to like have that refreshing. <laughs> it is refreshing. Absolutely. From where we started. I yeah. mean, it's a continuous process. We're still frustrated with yes. the new change, but, but Brian has really helped us a lot, so we thank Brian. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And then we, just one last thing, we definitely um, looking into sponsorship, mm -hmm. so that's going to be another thing that cool. we want to do. Yeah. You're going to meet Cynthia here yes. in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, uh, Dawn uh, is going to talk to us about retaining 
Carol Humiston. Right. That's, last but not least for today's meeting, uh, we need to retain an attorney to help us with our CPRA matter uh, compliance. And uh, Mickey and I have interviewed uh, Carol Humiston. Would like to recommend that we retain her services um, for the for the immediate future. Then she'll try to come to a future meeting too and, and provide more in depth information. And so I'd recommend that the board authorize me to retain Carol Humiston. Uh, for CPRA matter representation. I so motion. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Perf. And Don, Executive Director report. I don't think I have anything more than what we did. And what you already said. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! The, uh, our schedules have been uh, all divergent. Uh, every uh, board member has had great vacations, I know. And we've had uh, board members yeah. with significant marriages in their families. Uh, um, Thank you. And, I can be fine and, <laughs> and another one pending. Yeah. Yes. Well, I and um, um, the executive director got to see what Alaska looked like and uh -huh. talk to a fish. And, it's a pretty big fish. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so it, we've been busy, and it's affected our regular meeting schedule. But we should be coming out of that, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> The beginning in September or so. So with that, um, any board member comments? Anybody need to bring anything up? Okay, great. Can I announce something? Yes, make an announcement. <laughs> well, we have to go back to the public record. No, the public. Uh, <laughs> All right. All right anyway, no, I just, uh, many of you know, or many of you guys all look new, but I know Heather knows this. And, and John is um, every year we put on a holiday lunch concert. Mm -hmm. We did not last year because the Azusa Pacific Choir and Orchestra wasn't. Uh, they changed their program, um, but we bring in the uh, choir and orchestra, and it's a nice lunch, and then they sing, and it's an hour program. And, it's the end of the year. Uh, and it's a, a Tuesday before Thanksgiving, but we found the choir, and it's the uh, and actually they're performing on. Um, America's Got Talent, so they're called the Angel City Corral, and they're amazing, and so it's going to be very exciting, and so we will be back. Great. We're still going to do our toy drive. And do you still do the toy drive. And what's the date for the, uh, you have a date It's the 20th of November, it's the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, so. Right. It always conflicts with your schedule. I sent you yeah. a video. Yeah, yeah. it looks so I need cool. to. I need to watch it. Yeah, yeah watch Thank it. You. It's really good. Yeah. For well, a new, a new group well, of you. Never know. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Which yeah, hotel exactly. you do that? At Marriott. Marriott. Yeah, I won't be here this year, but another year. I'd like to love to come. Um, and next meeting, folks, put on your calendars September twentieth. And I will not be here because I have a wedding two days later, so <laughs> I will not be here. Okay. But meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. Everybody.